Hey, Shwobi here, and this is the second part to my video series about reclaiming the lost IFT functionality from Toya Smart Life using Home Assistant. Now, if you haven't seen my first video about setting up Home Assistant using the Raspberry Pi, you might want to check that out now by following the link above. Now that you have Home Assistant up and running, you'll need to communicate with it from the outside of your network. To do that, we'll set up this port forward. Now the port that we are specifically forwarding is port 8123. And this is portforward.com. And depending on your internet service provider and your hardware uh, manufacturer, uh, there are a lot of different ways to do that. And this site will help you uh, navigate the specifics that you need to set up that port forward. Now that we have our port forwarding done, we can set up a dynamic DNS server. What that will allow us to do is not have to change our configuration files and addresses when our IP address changes. Now I'm using the service Dynu, but it's as easy as clicking on sign up, putting in the name that you want, selecting that level. I like the free ddns.org one and clicking add. We can see some additional details here. We can leave all of that to the default. Now, because of router intelligence, we'll not be able to test this from within our own network. But the easy way to do this is to pick up your cell phone. And here's a picture of that. So now we get to some of the automation parts. Click on developer tools. And the second tab is services. And from there, we can do some testing of devices. So I can type in light and I can see light toggle, light turn off, light turn on. The same way is true with switches. Now, inversely, if I know I want to turn something on, I can do that turn on and see all of the different things available. Let's do light turn on. This will show a couple different options that you can select. Or we can do fill example data. Instead of the light kitchen, we can come down here and I want to select LED six. And this has an example of all of the different data that we might want to put in. Now, personally, I've not found the transition to work all that well. So I just remove it. Depending on how you want to access your colors of the light, if it's an RGB, you can define them with that RGB value or with a, uh, a readable color name. Now, it will only allow you to specify one color type. So if we try to run this right now, it'll throw an error because we have both RGB and color name. So let's just do color name for right now. Brightness is on a scale of zero to 255 and brightness percent is on a scale of zero to 100. I don't care about this step or any of these other issues. So now if I do call service, my light is now at 47% red. Now, how do we translate this into an automation? These are the attributes that we want to keep. So I'll just copy these and we'll go into configuration, automations, and we'll just add a new one. I just like setting it up fresh, so I just hit skip. Now we have this new automation, what do we want to call it? And we'll do this as a test light. We go to triggers, and I'm going to set this to be a webhook. Now, unlike IFT, where it assigns you a webhook ID, this has no ID. You just assign it a tag name. So I'm going to call this test light. Down here at device, do call service. And I'm just going to type in turn on. And here's my light turn on. And then I select my lights that I want. I want it to be this LED six. And then I can paste my data in right there. Now, since we already have this entry ID and a light name, we can remove the entry ID and then we save. And because that went away and we did not get any red lines, everything saved correctly. Now, if we come back here to automations, we can see our test light right here. Last triggered never. Now, before we go into IFT, let's go ahead 
and edit this real quick. How do we send a webhook in the first place? Let's learn more about triggers. And we can see that it requires a post through HTTP because we have set up that free DNS.org address will actually replace this your home assistant with that address. So for me, it'll be schwobe.freeddns.org. And then from this point on, will stay the same. And then this some webhook is what we already selected, which in our case is this test light. So moving on to ift, we can come up here to our create option. If we'll search for webhook is test light create trigger. And we'll do a webhook again. Now our method we must change to post and our content type we must change to text plain. Now we're not quite done with this URL up here. Based upon the information that we got from the home assistant, I know that I can paste this information in here. So this here is what I got from our dynamic DNS server. This portion stays the same. And then this is our name create action and I hit finish. And now we have just created a command to, uh, to turn our light on. Using the dual webhook system here in ift allows you to receive in ift a git webhook and then transmit a push webhook, which is what Home Assistant needs. Let's go ahead and start up the command line. And when we work with the command line, we have to tell it to send a push command. By default, it wants to send a git command. We can do that with just a little bit of some scripting before the address. And that scripting information is in that help section of the light as well. So now we need to put in test light. And if you notice, I'm using my local IP address because this is in my local system. So if we fire this off, we can see it went ahead and took and that we have a red light now, just like our test light says that it should do. And we also see that it says last triggered and it gives the day and date. I hope you found this video useful. I've learned quite a lot while preparing this video and would help me out if you gave it a thumbs up. And while you're at it, go ahead and click that bell and don't forget to subscribe. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.